everyone and welcome to 101 Barbers Academy. My name is Mauro Bravo and today I will show you how to perform an efficient and easy medium fade with attachment number two on top. I hope this tutorial will help you out in a daily basis. Thank you for watching and let's begin. When starting our work, we will make sure that our hair is well aligned for a more precise cut. We will start by cutting with a clipper using attachment number 2 for 6mm. We will perform our movements by working on panels from the front of the skull to the middle of the upper parietal area. This way, we will cut in the opposite direction to the hair growth to achieve greater precision. We will repeat these actions in order to make sure we get as much even length as possible. Right after, we will verify all hair is correctly cut to the same length, working in horizontal panels. These allow us to have even more control and precision over the cut hair. As can be seen in the images, working with a machine does not hide any difficulty. However, to master this type of tool perfectly, it is necessary to have absolute control over the pressure exert on the skull, which must be moderate and making repetitions without creating any angle, thus ensuring a clean, precise and even cut. Fading is a gradual transition that dissipates hair from very short to slightly longer and also makes it vanishing from light to dark. To achieve an optimal result, we will organize our fade with a work plan in three parts. One part for each side, leaving the final part for the rear area. It is fundamental to start our work by creating a master line or guide that helps us to structure the fade according to the cranial shape of each individual. In this case, we will mark our guide by exerting a very gentle pressure with a clipper that has a very precise cutting blade. 0.1 mm, but also strong enough that allows us to obtain a greater cutting capacity. Since we are working on a rather narrow skull, we will create a slightly curved muscle line. We will start from the area of the sphenoid bone, passing through the temporal bone to the rear prominence of the occipital bone. Once our guide is straight, defined and at the desired height, we will remove the excess hair from the bottom. To get a fade from the skin, we'll use a shaver. Making movements from the bottom to the top, we will create a parallel line under the guide. Then, to erase this new mark, we will position the razor diagonally, and without hardly exerting pressure, we will make circular movements which will allow us to integrate uniformly the slight change of length in the hair. We will connect both sides with the upper part by using the attachment number 1.5. We will do this with closed blade in the first instance and then open. Once this step has been completed, we will create a new line parallel to our master line at the top of the letter. We will work without attachment but with blade completely open.
we will then blur this new line from the bottom to the top using our clipper with fully closed blade. We will repeat this same technique using attachment number one. First open at the top and then close at the bottom. To complete this step and achieve an even smoother fading, we will repeat the process, this time using attachment number 0.5. At the moment, we will work with the blade 100% closed, and we will finish the step without attachment and with completely open blade to adjust even more the fading. As a final detail, we will use a trimmer to finish adjusting the fade on the master line. If our steps were done correctly, we will barely have any hair to cut at this point. We will continue our work on the other side, taking as a reference the master line which was defined up to the back of the skull. In this way, we will obtain an even fade on both sides. Since from now on it is just a matter of copying exactly the previous steps, we will make a recap of them. That will help us to simplify them and of course to memorize them. 1. Master line with 0.1 mm precision blade. 2. Remove any excess of hair below the master line. 3. Always shave below the master line. 4. Cut with Dutchman 1.5 and close blade just above the master line. 5. Continue cutting with attachment 1.5 and open blade to unify the upper part of our panel with the upper part of the skull. 6. Create new line parallel to the top of the master line. We will work only with open blade. Approximate line thickness 1 cm. Seven. Remove the master line from its base with a fully closed blade. 8. Cut just above the last line created using attachment number 1 with open blade. 9. Finish by integrating the last line using attachment number 1 with closed blade this time. 10. Fine tune the fade using attachment 0.5 with fully closed blade. 11. Fine tune with fully open blade and without attachment. 12. Finish using the trimmer for an optimal result. To conclude our work, we will integrate the backside following the steps already described. It is worth mentioning that depending on the requirements of each job, this area could be wider than what we see in this particular case. Everything will depend on shape and relief of the skull we are working on. When the time comes to define the contours of the forehead, we will position ourselves right in front of the customer or model. We will use the trimmer always working from the central zone of the recession area towards the sides of the same. This will allow us to have more control and balance of the line, which will prevent us from ending up with a crooked line. We will follow the natural contours without too much inward influence, thus achieving a smooth and subtle finish. 
note. To achieve a sharp and defined result which does not look artificial, it is extremely important not to try to achieve maximum definition from the start. In this way, we will avoid raising the profiling above what is necessary. To give the fringe a longer lasting and softer effect, we will use the clipper with the blade fully open. With a few simple touches, we will obtain a slight reduction of the recession line on the forehead. This will allow us to give more definition to the profile of the fringe when going over the edges with a straight razor. In order to bring freshness to this urban look, we will create an eye-catching detail on the top of the forehead that contrasts with the shading of the haircut. We will use the trimmer starting from straight line and concluding our design with a curved part. For this last step, it is recommended to use the corners of the blade, thus ensuring a reduced but precise cut. Finally, we will profile with straight razor to achieve a better and more defined contrast.